We are all made up of parts, hands and feet, eyes and teeth, muscle and bone. Have you ever wondered how we get there, though? It all starts with a cell, which divides into another cell, and another, and another. But they all start out the same, right? So how do they end up so different? Well, even though these cells start the same, little differences arise as a part of embryonic development. While exactly how this occurs is still not totally understood, there are areas which are well explored. For instance, scientists have figured out which parts of this become the different parts of this through a process called fate mapping. It may sound simple, but let's try something. Which part of this do you think becomes the head? Not so easy, huh? So how on earth did they figure all this out anyway? Well, back in 1929, a guy named Vogue had the same question. So he devised a pretty neat experiment. He took frog embryos and dyed specific cells in them. Then, when the eggs hatched, they had some parts of their body dyed as a result. Repeat the process as many times as you like, with as many embryonic cells as you like, and presto, you get a fate map. That's pretty cool, but can't cells send messages to one another? Yeah, cells signal each other all the time using chemical messengers called ligands. How do you know if it was the cell itself that is destined to become that part, or if it's just the nearby cells telling it what to do? Simple. You use two R's, removal and replacement. Let's say that you know that cells in a certain area of the embryo eventually become a foot. If you remove the cells from that area, and you still get a foot there, that must mean that some other cells came and took its place, meaning that it's not those specific cells which are special. It's actually the signaling from nearby cells. Another way of checking this is by relocating the cells from that area to another part of the body, let's say the head. So, if you get a foot growing out of the head as a result, that means that all that's necessary for making that foot are those cells because you moved it to another environment and it still made a foot. Not only that, that also means that when you moved those foot cells to the head, they were not only fated to become a foot, they were also able to resist the new signals from their new environment. A good, real-world example of this stuff are the experiments done by Speeman and Mangold. They thought that this one part of the frog embryo eventually became the spinal cord. So how did they test it? They took that region out of one embryo and moved it to the outside of another embryo. So what happened? The tadpoles they ended up with had two spinal cords, complete with two heads. That's actually pretty cool. So what's left? Removal, right? How does that work? Removal is a bit trickier than the others. Why is that? Remember how I said that in the embryo cells are always signaling to each other? Well, if you remove some cells, it usually messes up the embryo in weird ways, but at least that tells you that those cells were important. Usually you end up with something that's hard to recognize at all. For example, in another one of Speeman's experiments, they tried removing a part of the embryo called the gray crescent from frog embryos. What they ended up getting was this funny little wad of stuff. You're right, that's really weird. You can even use fate mapping techniques to find out how cells migrate through the body during development, like in Rawls' experiment. Another experiment? Yeah, you've got to figure this stuff out somehow. It's pretty straightforward, actually. The Rawls' experiment sums it up nicely. The basic idea behind the experiment was to inject chick embryos with the neural crest cells from quails. Neural crest cells? What are those? They are a type of cell which, among other things, become your melanocytes, or the cells that give your skin its color. So then, what happened to the chicks? When they hatched, they had patches that were a different color. The same color as the quails the cells were taken from. Hmm. Fate mapping seems pretty cool. I know, right? So now you know scientists figured out how the parts of this becomes this.